Hello dear students, in the last video I was telling you about the circulation, what is the importance of circulation and how the circulation helps in the transportation of nutrients throughout the body. That is uh, how the oxygenated blood from the lung it is traveling to the heart and from heart to different parts of the body that is to different cells and tissues of the body and from there the deoxygenated blood comes back through the uh, th through all the cells and tissues through inferior vena cava and superior vena cava the deoxygenated blood comes back and uh, comes to the heart and then from heart it is given to the lungs for the purification so this cycle continues for every heartbeat this cycle is continuing so that is called as uh, circulation and in human beings specifically it is uh, double circulation <coughs> yeah i will explain about this double circulation here what happens this is a heart and these are the lungs so the <coughs> from the pulmonary veins from the lungs we are getting the oxygenated blood whichever is red red in color whichever i have showed in red in color that is oxygenated blood and blue color is deoxygenated blood first the heart uh, that is uh, blood is oxygenated blood from the lungs it is from the lungs it is traveling through this is pulmonary veins from the heart through the pulmonary veins it is traveling into the heart here uh, i have discussed about the heart it is having four chambers that is <coughs> left atrium left ventricle right atrium right ventricle so it goes into the left ventricle and then travels into the iota and then arteries and travels to each and every tissue like this it is going up and it is coming down so it is traveling to each and every tissue of our body upper parts also it is going and lower parts also it is going through the arteries right and then there what happens it the oxygenated blood is supplied to each and every cell and from there the deoxygenated blood gets accumulated in the upper part it gets accumulated in the superior vena cava and it travels again like this into the heart through <coughs> through the superior vena cava in the upper part of the body and in the lower part of the body through the inferior vena cava like this lower part of the body also it is coming into the heart every part it every that is deoxygenated blood from each and every part of the body it is coming into the heart <coughs> right so the deo deoxygenated blood purify uh, that is deoxygenated blood from the heart it is moving like this again into the lungs and then purification happens the deoxygenated blood is converted into the oxygenated blood and then again it is coming to the heart like this right that is uh, the purification is taking place in the lungs that is called as pulmonary circulation and the blood is flowing from the heart to different parts of the body and from that is oxygenated blood is flowing from the heart to different parts of the body and deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body is again flowing back into the heart so that is called as systemic circulation hence two circulations are happening here pulmonary circulation which is a small part that is happening in the lungs to the heart and heart to the lungs actual purification of deoxygenated blood to oxygenated blood is happening through lungs that is through respiration so that that part is called as pulmonary circulation and from the uh, from the heart to different 
different parts of the body and from the different parts of the body to the heart supply of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood so that is called as systemic circulation so the blood is traveling <coughs> two times throughout the throughout one circle one heartbeat the blood is circulating two times in the heart that is called as double circulation two times it is traveling in the heart that is called as double circulation in single circulation only once the blood will travel through the heart but whereas in double circulation two times the blood is traveling through the heart that is the reason it is called as double circulation and two types of circulations are happening here one is pulmonary circulation and another is systemic circulation i think you all have understood what is the difference between single circulation and double circulation right yeah next we will discuss about lymphatic system lymph is the vital link between blood and tissues by which essential substances pass from the blood to the cells and excretory products from the cells to the blood right lymphatic system is a system from which essential substances pass from the blood to the cells and not uh, not the important products or the excretory products or the waste products from the cells to the blood the lymphatic system is a parallel system to the venous system which collects tissue fluid from the tissues and transport it to the venous system lymph is the substance that contains blood without solid particles the valves that are present in the lymphatic vessels and veins stop the reverse flow of blood this is called as lymphatic system now how the circulatory system has been evolved from the unicellular organisms to the human beings in, as i have discussed earlier in the unicellular organisms the circulatory system i mean the passing of the transport of the nutrients will take place through diffusion process but whereas when it comes to the human beings or the evolved animals it is taking place through the circulation so we will see step by step in each and every organism how this evolution of the transport or the circulatory system has took place in unicellular organisms like amoeba the protoplasm shows natural movements these movements are called as brownian movements because of which the nutrients and oxygen are distributed throughout the protoplasm equally in this way the nutrients and the oxygen will be distributed amoeba it is a unicellular organisms very simple it shows itself the natural movements and these movements are called as brownian movements and through these brownian movements the nutrients and oxygens are distributed throughout the protoplasm equally in this way the circulation that is transport of nutrients is happening in the amoeba simple next in multicellular organisms have to develop more complicated system for the transportation that's the thing which we had studied circulation double circulation single circulation and all the arthropods have developed a pulsatile organ to pump the blood that is the heart heart arthropods are uh, like have got this pulsatile organ to pump the blood everywhere in the complete body that is called as heart the blood instead of flowing in blood vessels flood floods the tissues directly supplying the nutrients to the tissues <coughs> right such type of transportation system which supplies nutrients to the tissues directly is called open type of circulatory system where nutrients are directly given to the tissues that is called as open circulatory system one more type of circulatory system that is double circulatory system in which blood takes the responsibility of delivering directly the nutrients are not passed here in the blood the nutrients are present that is passed to each and every cell in human beings it is 
closed type of circulatory system that is it flows in the blood vessels and then from the blood it is given to each and every part of the body that is to every cell and every tissue it gets the oxygenated blood in the form uh, and that oxygenated blood is containing the nutrients and from that the other products that is waste products are coming back into the blood blood becomes deoxygenated and that deoxygenated blood is again going to the heart and from there to the lungs and then in the lungs the respiration happens and the exchange of gases happens and the, because of the exchange of gases the carbon dioxide is coming that is carbon dioxide is going and the, again the oxygenated blood is produced in the lungs from the lungs it is traveling to the heart and from the heart again it is traveling to each and every part of the human body in this way the whole circulatory system is happening that is called as closed circulatory system what is the important difference between the open circulatory system and the closed circulatory system <coughs> in the closed circulatory system we make use of <coughs> that is the nutrients or the materials the oxygen is flowing in the blood vessels from the blood vessels it is traveling to each and every part of the body but whereas in open circulatory system directly the nutrients are supplied to the tissues that is called as open type of circulatory system and uh, which is happening in our human body that is called as closed closed type of circulatory system so next we will study an important part that is blood pressure what is this blood pressure every human being is having this blood pressure right that is the how the blood moves through the network of vessels and what is the force that is required to make this movement of the blood pressure the pressure that is required for the movement of the blood throughout the body and that force is provided by the heart and it is at the highest when the ventricles contract right forcing the blood out of the heart into the arteries when the ventricle contract what happens the blood is forced out of the heart and it goes into the arteries and then from the arteries it is going to each and every part of the human body uh, it is the oxygenated blood is reaching to each and every cell of the human body then afterwards after going that is uh, ventricles are contracting and the force that for, that is forcing the blood to come out of the heart and then there is a drop in the pressure as the ventricles are refilling the blood in the next beat next heart beat this happens right that is drop in the pressure of the ventricles that is making the uh, in that process and in that particular time there is a refilling of the blood that is happening in the heart and uh, that is called as like uh, in one heart beat this happens the the first the ventricles are contracting and the blood is coming out right and it is going to each and every part of the blood and then again the blood uh, the from other parts that is inferior vena cava and superior vena cava it should reach to the heart the blood is refilling itself that is the heart is refilling itself the blood so in this way the circulation is happening right contraction of the ventricles and relaxation of the ventricles that is only our blood pressure very simple and uh, the doctors uh, measure the blood pressure using the sphygmomanometer right um, <clears throat> and bp is always uh, how uh, where where the sphygmomanometer uh, will be attached to the upper arm artery it then only the readings will be proper always when when we go to a doctor or when we measure the blood pressure ourselves it should be attached to the upper arm artery and uh, the device that is used to measure this blood pressure is the sphygmomanometer and bp will change yeah see when it is in the morning the blood pressure will be different and when it is in the night the blood pressure will be different because the body is undergoing different uh, activities so when the person is engaged in uh, uh, when the person is at rest the blood pressure will be different and when the person is walking 
if you measure the blood pressure at that moment it will be different when he is running the blood pressure will be different so at every moment the blood pressure is changing right and the people who have high bp during the resting period when they are resting also that is when when the doctor measures when when they are resting then the doctor is measuring the blood pressure even then the uh, that is uh, our uh, yeah one more thing i'll i'll mention here is the bp is nothing but systolic blood pressure divided by di diastolic blood pressure even uh, when the person is at rest if we are getting that systolic blood pressure high, high then only we we say that the particular person is having hypertension so uh, ideal value that is healthy person the value is 120 mm of mercury it should show that is systolic blood pressure and uh, diastolic blood pressure it should show 80 mm of mercury plus or minus 10 is okay uh, that is during rest this is the value that sh that it should show during rest then we say that normal blood pressure otherwise if the value is high the upper value is high then the person is suffering from hypertension or high bp if the lower value is high then the person is having low bp like that uh, the doctor will be uh, <coughs> diagnosing the blood pressure and what is this coagulation of blood hmm. see whenever uh, we get any wound the blood is continuously flowing or uh, blood is getting clotted and uh, the blood flow stops right that is only called as coagulation of blood right another that is uh, and animals survive when they meet severe injuries also animals survive right that is because of the coagulation of blood and when you cut yourself the blood flows out of the wound for only short time yes blood is flowing out of the body but for only short time later what happens it gets coagulated it's get, uh, and that uh it it is getting filled with the reddish solid material and this material is called as blood clot when the blood flows out the platelets release an enzyme called as thrombokinase thrombokinase right uh, that is whenever the blood is flowing out there is a release of enzyme called as this is important thrombokinase which is helping us to clot the blood which is helping in the coagulation of the blood and this thrombokinase acts on another substance called as fibrinogen that is present in the dissolved state converting it into insoluble fibrin and the blood cells entangle in the fibrin containing forming the clot clot uh, because of this clot only uh, the blood is not just going out of the body if the blood if a small injury occurs then if the blood goes out then the person will not stay alive right how how it is prevented how uh, how the blood flow it, it is prevented because of the coagulation of blood that is whenever the blood is flowing out the platelets are releasing an enzyme important okay that is called as thrombo kinase that is <clears throat> and this acts on another material called as another substance that is called as fibrinogen that is present in the dissolved state and it is con converting it into insoluble fibrin this insoluble fibrin helps in clotting the blood it forms the clot this is called as coagulation of the blood now so till now whatever we had discussed that was the transportation or the circulation that took place in animals especially we have discussed about the human beings that is double circulation it is closed type of circulation and uh, that took play uh, that that is because of the the transportation is with the help of the heart so we have seen everything related to the animals now let's switch to the plants now let's see the transportation that happens in the plants how materials transport within the plant and how is the water absorbed we will see and the mechanism of water movement in the plants uh, you might have heard about osmosis that we will study in detail and transportation of mineral salts how it is happening in the plants and transportation of the different materials how it is happening in the 
plants even in plants the nutrients has to be has to be passed to each and every part of the plant right so how it is happening how the transportation of nutrients is taking place to each and every tissue of the plant that in detail we will be studying now how materials are transported within the plant there is a vast transport system in continual supply of essential nutrients and oxygen to perform metabolic activities and to remove excretory substances which are found in each and every cell of the animal body in animal body we have seen how it happened right that is we have a, a proper circulatory system and from the proper circulatory system the deoxygenated blood from uh, that is there is a movement between the <coughs> lungs and the heart and different parts of the body from the long lungs we get the oxygen that is heart is getting the oxygenated blood from the ox, from the heart it is supplied to each and every part of the body and from each and every part of the body the deoxygenated blood is moving from uh, inferior vena cava and superior uh, uh, vena cava to the heart again and this deoxygenated blood is again moving to the lungs and then getting purified and from there it is again uh, coming to the heart and other parts of the body like this it is repeating every time proper structure we have right in the in the human beings or the animal body we have this proper structure and uh, that that because of that there is the continual supply of essential nutrients and oxygen to perform the metabolic activities and even the deoxygenated or the waste materials are removed from the cells every time it is happening from the cells it is uh, it is coming out and then it is going to the heart again from the heart again to the lungs like that every time it is happening in the circulatory system we have a proper uh, circulatory system proper structure is present in the um, animals in 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 plants how does it happen that is roots so the roots absorb water with the minerals from the soil roots are important for the absorption of water and minerals from the soil and there are root hairs for the roots we have root hairs also from which water enters into the plant it is not completely understood how the water enters the root hairs and passes inwards from the cell to cell until it gets into the xylem vessels but there is no doubt that yeah here main thing is osmosis takes place that is the movement of nutrients and the water from the root to different parts of the body is taking place through the with, with the help of osmosis every living cell act as an osmotic system that is the cytoplasm lining of the cell wall acts as the semi permeable membrane right that is the cytoplasm lining of the cell wall plant is also having the cell and the cell wall, plant cell will be there cell wall will be there and the cell wall the cytoplasm lining is acting as a semi permeable membrane and the osmosis is taking place because of osmosis only the water is getting absorbed in the each and every tissue of the plant soil water concentration is more dilute than that of the cell sap in the root hair therefore water will pass into the vacuole of the root by hair by the osmosis that is um, <clears throat> soil what water present in the soil it is having it is more dilute that is the reason what happens as it is uh, it as it is dilute it will be passing in passing on to the vacuole of the root hair that is uh, the nutrients from the lower concent the lower concentration area they are going into the high concentration area through the semi permeable membrane this process we call it as osmosis and it, because of osmosis only the water is getting absorbed the nutrients or the water everything is getting absorbed to each and every tissue of the plant and root pressure is not the main cause of movement of water in xylem but it is certainly one of the factor so here two factors are taking place one is through the osmosis the nutrients are reaching to each and every part of the uh, tissues of the plants and one more is through the root pressure but it is not the important factor but it is also one of the factor which is playing its role in the movement of water in the xylem in this way water is getting absorbed to each and every tissue of the plants let us see the <coughs> 
ls of the root showing the relationship of the root hair and the soil water so this is the xylem vessel and here the cell cells of the cortex are present and this is the cytoplasm there is a vacuole here from vacuole only the nutrients are passed and cell wall of the root hair these are the a spaces that are present in between the these structures and these uh, the outermost layer is called as epidermal cell yeah the soil particles are present here uh, in the root the soil particles are present and the water is also present that is called as soil water and the nucleus is present here yeah from here uh, the water is getting absorbed through the osmosis process it is entering into the epidermal cell from there it will go to the xylem cells and the cells of the cortex so like this the movement of the um, water and uh, in turn the water and the nutrients everything is taking place from the roots to other parts of the plant hmm exactly we will see the mechanism of water movement in the plants how does the water reach to the top of tree like a eucalyptus see root is somewhere down and the tall tree like eucalyptus how the water is going to top and the evaporation of water through the leaves is called as transpiration and the water is getting evaporated from the leaves also that that process we call it as transpiration when the leaves transpire there is a pulling effect on the continuous column of the water in the xylem vessels the top ends of these vessels are surrounded by the leaves mesophyll cells which contain cell sap so the water is continuous from the xylem continuously it is moving from the xylem vessels to the walls of the mesophyll cells from which it evaporates into the air spaces causing the pull right in this way the water pull is happening and the water is moving to each and every part of the tissues the uh, plant tissues the water column does not break because of its continuous molecular attraction right because of the continuous molecular attraction the water is continuously moving from the roots it is going to each and every part of the plant even at the top of the plant it will reach tall plants also it will reach the water will reach in this way and water is absorbed by the osmosis from the soil by the root hairs so main important concept here is osmosis through the osmosis from the soil by the root hair the water is getting absorbed right this is passed into the xylem vessels which form the continuous system of tubes through root and stems into the leaves here the water evaporates and releases into the atmosphere the evaporation creates the main pull of water above root pressure which gives a variable and minor push from below this results in the continuous column of moving water and that is called as transpiration stream so in this way the water movement is taking place in the plants so the water is transported to each and every part of the plant now let's see how the mineral salts are transported to each and every part of the plant mineral salts are necessary for plant nutrition and they are obtained from the soil through the root hairs again this is also obtained from the root hairs these salts are in the form of electrically charged ions they are not absorbed into the root hairs by the simple process of diffusion but it involves the use of energy by the cytoplasm just by diffusion they are not absorbed but it also involves the energy of the cytoplasm by which the mineral salts are absorbed the ion travels along the xylem cells and pass to the growing points of the plant where they are used for the growth purpose so mineral salts are very very important for the growth of the plants and how it is happening again through the roots and the salts are the, these mineral salts are in the form of electrically charged ions and just not by the process of diffusion but it involves the use of energy by the cytoplasm also for the transfer of the mineral salts these are the four important points you should remember how the transport of mineral salts is happening in the plants
Yeah. And different materials. First thing is water has to be transported that we have seen. And second thing is mineral salts has to be trans transported in the plants that we have seen. Next is transport of materials in the plants. The veins of the leaf consist of xylem and phloem. And these tissues are continuous with the stem. And various biologists studied about this food transportation in plants with the help of green fly, that is aphids. To obtain the plant juice, an aphid pierces the plant tissues with its long needle like organ, that is proboscis. An aphid is killed while the act of feeding and the body is then carefully cut away, leaving the hollow proboscis still inserted into the phloem. Like this. This is the aphid and it is cutting and it is inserted into the phloem. That process that is called as proboscis. This aphid is extracting the food material from the plant. And in the similar manner, the transport of materials is taking place in the plants. So these are the four points, how the transport of materials is taking place in the plants. So that was studied with the help of this aphid, green fly. Just go through the points. In this, it is showing that aphid is extracting food material from the plant. And it is found that because the content of the phloem sieve tubes are under slight pressure, under the, the fluid slowly exudes from the cut end of the proboscis in the form of drops. These drops are then collected and analyzed. This fluid is found to contain sugar and amino acids. Aphids absorb so much sugar from the phloem that they cannot assimilate all of it and excretes out of the body as a sticky syrup called as honey. So in this way, uh, we can observe that whatever fluid was present that contained sugar and amino acid, that it contained the materials like sugar and amino acids. In this way, we have seen uh, three types of transport that is happening in the plant body, right? First is water, how it is absorbed that we have seen, how the water is flowing from different part that is from the root, how it is going to each and every part of the plant body. Even to the top, the water is reaching. How it is happening? That we have seen in detail. These points you should go through about how the water is being absorbed by the plants. And this one is showing the lateral section of the root, showing the relationship of root hair and soil water. There is a soil water and the root is present, how the water is flowing from the root here to other parts of the plant. And how the mechanism of water movement is happening in the plants. So the mechanism also we have seen, that is to each and every part of the plant body, how the water is reaching from the roots to all the parts of the body and we have seen the process called as transpiration. Next, these points also you should understand for the mechanism of water movement in the plants. and how the transport of mineral salts is happening in the plants. Mineral salts are in the form of electrically charged ions. These are also obtained with through the root hairs. Now 
go through these four points and how the transport of materials is happening in the plants. Not only mineral salts, materials also get transferred and that was studied by the biologists with the help of this aphid that is extracting the food material from the plant. Whatever it has extracted, that fluid contained sugar and amino acids. In that way, we can say that there is a transport of material also happening in the plants. So, what all we have learnt till now? The pulse rate that is equal to the pulse rate and heartbeat, both will be equal. Whenever a doctor is checking the pulse, pulse rate and the heartbeat will be equal. And Ring Linick discovered the first stethos stethoscope. S through the stethoscope only, the heartbeat is measured. The heart is covered with two pericardial membranes filled with pericardial fluid which protects it from the shocks. Right blood vessels attached to the heart are called as arteries which supply blood to body parts and lungs. From the arteries, the blood is supplied to each and every part of the body that is oxygenated blood is moving to each and every part of the body and it is going to the lungs. The less rigid vessels are called as veins which brings blood from the body parts. And heart has four chambers. Yeah, I have described it. That is it is having four chambers. Left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle and right atrium. Two upper atria, these are the upper atrium, upper atria and two lower ventricles. The arteries carry the oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery. All the arteries will carry the, or artery means it is carrying the oxygenated blood. All the arteries are carrying the oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery is carrying the deoxygenated from blood from the heart to the lungs. And veins are carrying the deoxygenated blood. Except the pulmonary veins. Pulmonary vein is carrying the oxygenated blood from the lung to the heart. Only the pulmonary vein is carrying the oxygenated blood. Rest all veins are carrying the deoxygenated blood. The arteries are carrying the oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery which is carrying the deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. That is from the heart to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. It is passed the deoxygenated blood. From the lungs to the heart, pulmonary veins carry the oxygenated blood. Except for pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins, all other artery carry the oxygenated blood and all other veins carry the deoxygenated blood. One contraction and relaxation of heart is called as cardiac cycle. If the blood goes to the heart only once before it reaches to all other body parts, it is called as single circulation. Only once the blood is travelling through the heart, then it is called as single circulation. If the blood is travelling twice, then it is called as double circulation. And vitamin K deficiency is leading to the delayed coagulation of blood. I have discussed in detail about the coagulation of blood. Because of this coagulation of blood only, whenever we are getting any injury, the complete blood is not coming out. 
blood is coming out but after some time it is getting clotted because of the coagulation of blood and if the vitamin k is deficient in the particular person then there will be delayed coagulation of blood and the plants absorb soil water through the roots by the process of osmosis osmosis is very important for the absorption of water soil water through the roots to each and every part of the plant and water travels through xylem vessels and food materials travels through phloem vessels so through xylem water is traveling xylem means you should remember that the water is traveling through the xylem phloem through the phloem the food is traveling and the biologist studied this about the phloem tubes with the help of aphids so these are some of the important questions i have jotted out for the for this chapter you should explain the process of coagulation of blood i have explained in the previous slides you can go through that what happens if there are no valves in the veins if there are no valves then the blood flow would not have happened right just in detail you will be explaining by by going back and studying the slides where are the valves located in the human heart and write their names write the differences between the systolic and diastolic blood diastole what are arteries what are veins i have given the difference by teaching just go through that and what is xylem what is phloem xylem just now i have said xylem carries the water and phloem tissue carries the food what is called as root pressure we have discussed in detail and you should also tell how it is useful for the plants what are the three main types of blood vessels in the body what is transport system and how does it help the organism transport system is very very important in case of animals or plants you should explain in detail about the circulatory system in the animals and transportation system in the plants and what is the relationship between blood and plasma you can go through the slides completely and explain all the questions write the answers for all the questions you have to go through the complete video to answer these questions everything we have studied in detail how the transport of materials is happening in the plants and with the help of this uh, aphid example how the materials are transported in the plants that we have seen how it is extracting the food proboscis process and through the xylem water is getting transported and through the phloem food is getting transported transportation of the materials in the plants that we have seen in detail and mineral salts how they are transported the mechanism of the water movement that is mainly you should know about the osmosis process and transpiration stream here how the water is transported between the root hair and the soil water exactly how materials are transported within the plants everything we have seen in detail main thing is water has to be transported in the plants mineral salts has to be transported in the plants and materials have to be transported in the plants how is it how how is it happening we have seen in detail you can go through the complete video and understand the transportation that is happening in the plants 
and very important concept that is called as coagulation of blood with the help of thrombic thrombokinase enzyme called as thrombokinase and the fibrin fibrinogen it is mixing and it is forming an insoluble fibrin that helps in the clotting of the blood that is called as coagulation of the blood vitamin k deficiency will lead uh, to the <coughs> if the vitamin k is deficient then the coagulation of blood will be delayed and the blood flow will be more out of the body what is blood pressure what is systolic blood pressure what is diastolic blood pressure everything in detail i have discussed go through the points and understand about the blood pressure what is how the circulatory system has been evolved from the unicellular organism to the multicellular organism and what is the difference difference between open type of circulatory system and closed type of circulatory system that i have discussed in detail go through the this particular slide and try and understand and note down the points and what is brownian moment that takes place in the amoeba unicellular organisms what is lymphatic system go through this slide note down the points and try and understand what is the lymphatic system what is the difference between single circulation and double circulation single circulation the blood flows only once through the heart double circulation two times the blood flows through the heart there are that is two types of circulation happens here systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation i have discussed in detail you can go back to that slide for the details and try and understand about the double circulation and explain how the oxygenated blood from the lungs it is flowing through the heart and from the heart to different parts of the body and from different parts of the body the deoxygenated blood is collected and it is supplied to the heart and from heart it is given to the lungs again like this two times the blood is flowing through the heart in the complete circulation process that's why it is called as double circulation it is very very important question you can go through the slide again go through the video again and try and understand the double circulation what is cardiac cycle i have discussed in detail you can go through once so these were the important points i have discussed in the video just try and understand if you are not getting anything you can ask me in the comment section i'll be there to help you go through all the slides properly and note down the points and prepare well for your exams thank you dear students